What is up guys? I had a lot of questions after my last tank video uh, guide on how to play uh, the new map with the robots and also how to play an aggressive tank like Winston or D.Va. Well, I got the perfect game where I showcase how you play uh, Winston. So I'm just gonna uh, like take it step by step and also when to swap off Winston and uh, go D.Va for example. And also how to play her. So the the two like more aggressive tanks, apart from maybe Junker Queen and Ball, because they do have a little bit of different playstyle. So I'm just gonna take it step by step, my thought process on how I engage fights and how I actually want to start the fights. Right now, I'm just trying to get in a position where I can see the enemy, where they're coming from, because they could also come from the high ground. And I'm trying to um, see who is the biggest threat in their team and also who is easy to die. So for example. If they have a Junkrat or like a Hanzo, he is pretty. They're pretty easy to kill, and they're also like very big threats, as they can just one shot one of your teammates. And also, for example, if they have an Ana, Ana isn't like the biggest threat, but she's like even Ana dies on the enemy team first, they're gonna lose a fight because their main healer is gone. So this is my thought process right now. Who am I gonna go for? So right now, I'm looking at their team. I see a Zarya drop down. I see an Ash, I see a Baptiste. I'm looking for the second healer. Who did, do they have a second healer? I see Kiriko. And there's just one person missing and that's, I don't know where the soldier is. That is basically it. So right now I'm calling to my team. Okay, I'm gonna jump on the Ash as she is the major threat right now. Because if I jump on Baptiste, he's gonna put down an immortality field, heal himself. He's not very easy to kill for me. Same with Kiriko, uh, uh, like the invulnerability nade and also uh, the dash. So for me, Ash is like the, the best target to go on right now. Like I don't even necessarily need to kill her because this will force their healers to like peel for their uh, squishy. And if they don't, she will just die. And also the Ash isn't DPSing my team at this moment. So you will just see me go in right here to create space for my team. Even though the Zarya is on my backline, I am not gonna shoot the Zarya. This is what Winston does. I explained this in another video. I go on the back line to create space for my team right now. And as the Ash is already dead, I am just on the healers trying to get aggro away from their Zarya. Their Zarya isn't getting healed anything and the Zarya actually has to fall back from my team. And right now I find the second DPS hiding and I instantly, like he's shooting my uh, teammates in the back. So instantly I have to make sure this guy uh, loses his like great position. For example, if I now jump in the enemy backline, he will just shoot my Torbjorn in the back for free and I'm the one that's get that gets left. So when you jump and you need to make sure that your team isn't getting fucked uh, because otherwise like, yeah, you're just gonna be there alone. It's like vice versa. So I force him off this position. And right now, again, assess the situation. Who am I going for? Who is the big threat? And at the moment when I'm looking at like who to go for, two of my allies get picked. And this is a very big deal that I'm about to show you with the robot right now. So first of all, I'm calling to my allies. Guys, fall back. We are gonna stall. And with we, I mean me. Like I have a Kiriko behind me, and I think I have, uh, or maybe I have a Moira behind me, and I have a uh, Sojourn behind me. So what I'm doing right here isn't just running away. It isn't suiciding. It's something in between. What I'm doing is I'm stalling the robot from actually walking across the map. Look, I'm just, st I'm just standing in this position so the robot gets contested. I'm putting down my bubble. Waiting for the bubble to expire, and then when I say, okay, this is a little bit too hot, I call to my surgeon, fall back. I jump over the edge. I'm going to the next corner, and I'm going to stall the robot for as long as possible. Okay, I saw the soldier in the flank, but like, look at what I'm doing now. I'm doing the exact same thing. I am just on the robot permanently, but I'm not in any danger whatsoever. So basically, don't try to just instantly run away. Un unless, of course, you're like 1v5. Maybe then it's like accurate to run away. But in this uh, situation, I just wanted to showcase. You can just keep the robot there forever. Right now, my entire team has respawned. And they like they didn't even push at all. Like they pushed 1.94 meters. That's absolutely nothing. So right now, again, I do the same thing. I'm jumping on their backline. As you can see. 
Kiriko is healing from the left, not a very optimal target. Baptiste is healing from the right. So what I'm doing right now, jumping on the back line, putting a, like putting pressure on the enemy back line. So once again, both healers have to deal with me instead of helping their Zarya. And look what happened to the enemy Zarya. She just died because she was she wasn't aware that her team was not there, and she just went in a one v four and she traded with our Junkrat. Sure, but like the tank is worth two people. So as like, in a way, I am keeping four people busy, and the Zarya dies against four people, if that makes sense. And now, like, it's getting a little bit too hot. I did my job, Zarya died, and now I'm jumping back to get heals from my main healer. Sojourn went a little bit too deep, but she's still traded. All good. And now it's just basic. Now, basically, it's just clean up. Enemies are completely disorganized. The Ash doesn't know where to go. And now Baptiste just trickles in as well. It's just, this is just clean up, basically. But as you can see, I actually am thinking about like who to go on, when to go on them. It's a big thought process. And right now, I am telling my team, if they're going to hold on high ground, I'm going to jump there. Like, I even ping it. I'm going to jump there because I don't want like a sojourn or a soldier on high ground shooting uh, down at us. But at this moment, I see the soldier actually Frankie from the right, all alone. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna assess the situation. Okay, there's no one with him. And now I'm jumping in to put pressure on him. And basically, I am putting, again, pressure on two people at the same time. Their main DPS and their main healer are both busy with me. And they're not doing anything. They're not contributing to the fight. Kiriko is, is uh, hovering me, which is nice. And now, again... I'm jumping on them and as you can see in the lower elos people are actually so disorganized like the soldier didn't realize that baptiste cannot heal him when he's like on the other side of the shield all he had to do was stay on the same side so i killed the soldier and now i actually chase the baptiste down as well and bear in mind baptiste isn't helping his team at all and now kiriko actually has to come back from the main fight leaving her tank and other dps to come help the Baptiste. So I should jump back. I did my job. Like I, I am not kill hungry. I'm not like oh my god. I need to kill this guy. I'm gonna ult for it. No. I did my job. Again I hear them coming from the right side. I'm chasing down the flanks. It's getting a little bit too hot. I jump back. We're still pushing the card. I'm telling my team literally, guys, just keep pushing the robot. There's no point in finding that. So we're just waiting. Everybody falls back to the card. It's go time. Our Sojourn goes in, and this is my cue. Sojourn goes in, and now everybody wants to shoot the Sojourn. Or hide behind like a little cubby like these two supports are doing. Now my job is to get all the attention of the sojourn. Like I see this happen all the time. There's like a Genji blading or sojourn blading. And the tank is and the supports are just standing there with their dick in their hand. Looking like oh. No you need to make sure the attention goes off the sojourn. So she can actually have a good ult. So this is what I'm doing. I'm go going on both supports again. Keeping them busy. Even if they're DPS. Like, I'm aggroing three people right now to make sure my Sojourn doesn't get one shot. And I, I'm even looking back to see, like, is my Sojourn still alive? Yes. Okay, I can keep going. And now the moment... Now the moment I see my Sojourn die is the moment I know, okay, I need to start do, doing some DPS myself. So right now I kill the Soldier. I go back to the cart, try to help them. I see both my healers are actually pretty decent at uh, disengaging. So, like, it's a Kiriko uh, Moya, so they can't really handle themselves in fights. So, I'm happy to see that they're, they're both still alive. I'm still pushing the robot, by the way, at this time. Okay, so now I die. I die. And now I'm actually thinking, huh, is this still gonna be a Winston play? Look at their team. They have a Reaper, they copied my Winston, they have a Soldier, and they have they also copied our supports. They now have Kiriko Moira. I can only kill Soldier on the enemy team, and that is even a hard target for uh, Monka Giga to kill. Monka Giga being Winston. Now, now even the Soldier uh, switched to Genji. So, basically, I'm really happy I picked D.Va right here. Even though Winston is re really good against Genji. I just, like, it, this isn't Overwatch 1 anymore where Winston can just chase down a Genji. Like, I still need to create space for my team. Like, 
Diva is like such a good choice here. One, I counter the enemy Winston. Two, I can absorb Moira Ball. Three, I can absorb all Reaper's damage. Like this is a very good pick. And now you're gonna see, uh, like they start winning the game because they counterpicked me. Now I am gonna switch to another target and now you will see that we're actually gonna roll them again. Like, like look, at, look at what the enemy Winston is doing. This is basically what I said in my last video not to do. He literally just jumps in one meter horizontal jump. He, he plays like he's playing Reinhardt or Zarya. He's just playing frontline. Like this isn't doing anything. And look, his healer is trying to keep him alive. Just look how much of a slaughter this is. Like, what is going on here? The Winston is just, do it's like, it's like you're, sh you're shooting a super minion. Well, meanwhile, he should have jumped in to contest the Junkrat, jumped in our backline to contest the sports. This is like the, the big difference I want to show. And also because I contested the robot earlier, they didn't even get to push that far. Like if I didn't contest the robot earlier, they would have been able to push way further right now. I'm just defense matrixing all the damage from Reaper. Reaper is just staggering really bad. And we get a really good fight. And you can also tell. Before this fight starts. You can also tell. Just because I picked D.Va. You can instantly see the swaps on the enemy team. The Reaper has swapped. And the Genji have swapped. Both to Tracer and Symmetra. Because Symmetra is really good against D.Va. Um, because like. Winston destroys them. But because I swapped the D.Va. They instantly swap as well. But it's a little bit too late. We have too much momentum going for us right now. And I'm also making calls, like, I, I want to emphasize how important it is to make calls. As soon as I identify it, like, okay, there's a Symmetra, the first thing I call is kill Symmetra, because that is the first target you should kill. Right now I realize, okay, there's Symmetra. Look, look at my first reaction. Okay, Symmetra dead, and now I basically know, okay, they have no momentum left. They have nothing left. I'm, I'm making sure my backline is okay. There's a Moira still there. Oh, good. The Tracer swap back to Reaper. And as you can see, again, the monkey just jumps in and doesn't do anything. This is not how you're supposed to play monkey. And now my main job is make sure the Symmetra dies and make sure Reaper isn't doing any damage with my defense matrix. And as long as I keep that up, it's fuck yeah, it's it's very impossible for them to hold. Look, the the the, the, the Reaper literally has no chance of going to my team. This is actually a mistake what I do. I should not go for the Kiriko here because I cannot kill her. I should have been able to stick on the Reaper. This is honestly... Oh, n never mind. Never mind. I take back what I said. <laughs> I instantly went back for the Reaper. I probably realized it in the game as well. Once again, I see the Symmetra. First thing I call Symmetra dead, and then yeah, just make sure the Reaper doesn't do any damage. That's that's my only job right now. Symmetra again. Symmetra is up. All I'm shooting is Symmetra. The Reaper there was actually lucky I didn't have any defense matrix left. I should have kept more up for the fight. And now, like, I see a Bastion. <laughs> As you can see, my first instinct is just to snap towards the Bastion. Make sure he doesn't do any damage. Then boop him back. Focus him. Because just like Symmetra, Bastion is a really big priority pick. I get my ulti again. And we secure the game. Actually with a mech kill. 
I really hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, uh, feel free to leave me in the comments. Also, if you have any more questions or any more video recommendations where I can uh, explain my thought process or maybe different kind of play styles, make sure to leave it in the comments. I do read all the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Halloween. Have a blessed day. I've got eight bad bitches by my bitch down. Everything I do is going south. Why do I bring these sucks of bitches to my house? Keep on telling me I'm fine, yeah. Get in line, yeah. I've got